Hey guys, this is video 11-2. We're going to talk about two-step stoichiometry problems. So yesterday in class, we took a look at one-step stoic problems, and we uh, practiced going from moles to moles. Okay, and so I think of this as a map. Okay, now yesterday we looked at how to get from moles of A to moles of B, right? So essentially think of these are two different values that we can get to. And we said that in order to get from moles of A to moles of B, you use the coefficients from the balanced equation. Right? So that's where that's why the balanced equation was necessary because you need the coefficients. Okay? This is one type of one step problem. Now there are some other types of one step problems. So for instance, I can go from moles of A to grams or mass of A, right? I can go from moles of A to the volume or I guess it would be liters of A. And let's go back here. This is grams, so that would be mass of A, right? And I'm going to put this in a little bubble. Okay, so VOL is volume. And then finally, I could do particles of A, right? And that would be things like atoms, molecules, etc., right? All right, so these are three things that I could take the moles of A and convert them into. And we know in order to do that, uh, to get from, say, moles of A to grams of A, I would need to use the mass from the p-table, periodic table, right? To get from moles of A to volume of A, I would use the value of 22.4. And to get from moles of A to particles of A, I would use 6 times 10 to the 23rd, the magical mole number, right? So I can go, theoretically, from mass of A to moles of A to moles of B. I would just need the periodic table and a balanced equation. Or I could go from volume of A to moles of A to moles of B using 22.4 and a balanced equation. I could go from particles of A to moles of A to moles of B, again, using a balanced equation, but also using 6 times 10 to 23rd. Or I could go from particles of A to moles of A to grams of A. So pretty much, I can use all these one-step problems to get from one measurement to another measurement. Okay, so going from one measurement to the one right next door, that's a one-step problem. A two-step stoichiometry problem is when I go through from one measurement to the next and then on to one more measurement. So mass of A to moles of A to moles of B, or moles of B to moles of A to particles of A. Okay, so it's two steps, meaning I have to use two different values to get there. Okay, and also realize there's a whole nother section over here, right? Because if I have moles of B, I could get the mass of B, right? And I could get the volume of B, and I could get the particles of B, right? Just like I did over here, okay? And I would use the same values. So here I would use the periodic table, and here I would use 22.4, and here I would use 6 times 10 to 23rd. Ah, 10 to the 23rd. So I could go from particles of B to moles of B to moles of A, and that's a two-step problem. Okay, so what I'd like you to do right now is pause the video. You haven't written anything in your notes yet, right? So I'd like you to pause the video, and I'd like you to copy this diagram down onto your notes. Okay, it's gonna take you a little bit, but it's gonna be an important map for helping you to figure out the path converting from one measurement to another, okay? So I would say the path, for instance, to get from the mass of, of A to the moles of B would be I'd go from mass of A to moles of A using the periodic table, and then I would convert from moles of A to moles of B using the coefficients in the balanced equation. So that's a path, all right? So I'd like you to pause it if you haven't already, copy this down, once you've got it copied down, then start up the video again and we'll do some practice. So, 
two-step stoic problems. Okay, I've already talked about the path. So here's an example of a path. If I have moles of A, I can go to moles of B, and I can take moles of B and convert that to mass of B. Okay, the biggest thing, as I mentioned the other day, was to change substances, meaning to go from substance A to substance B. Another way of saying it is to get from moles of one type of substance to moles of another type of substance, you must have a balanced equation. Okay, this is what's important. This is why we spent so much time last unit practicing balancing equations. You need balanced equations, okay? All right, moving on, enough said. We've got two practice problems we're gonna do. I wanna do the first one for you um, or with you, and then the second one I'd like you to pause and try on your own. So let's start with the practice problem we're gonna do together. This is already balanced out for us, okay? You should have your diagram in front of you that you copied down. So here is the path that I would take based on this question. So I have balanced equation, Here's the question, how many moles of NO are made when 34 grams of NH3 react? Okay, so first of all, we use dimensional analysis, so I'm gonna write down the given value, which in this case is 34 grams of NH3. So I do 34 grams NH3, okay? Dot and a line, right? Now, I have grams. Right? And if you remember in your little map, or you look at your diagram that you have in front of you, we essentially have the mass of A. Right? And on your diagram, there's only one thing you can do with the mass of A. You can turn it into moles of A. That's the only path from mass that you can take. You can go to moles of A. So I know right off the bat that I need to go, well, I need to get rid of grams. Right? So I'll put that on the bottom. And I can only go to moles, so moles of A. And if you're confused by, I keep saying like mass of A, moles of A, moles of B, mass of B. A just means the first substance that you're dealing with in your question. So in this case, ammonia, this guy, is A. Okay? So that means I'm going from mass of A, which is mass of ammonia, to moles of A, which would be moles of ammonia. Okay? And H3. So, um, if I were to fill in the numbers here, okay, the mass, we get that from the periodic table. And I actually put the numbers in here so we don't have to go to the periodic table. The mass of nitrogen is 14, mass of hydrogen is 1. In an ammonia, we have 1 nitrogen and 3 hydrogens, so it would be 14 plus 3, which gives us a mass of 17. And remember, all of the values on the periodic table, these numbers, are for 1 mole which is why whenever we have grams on this side and moles on the other side, the number next to moles is always one because these values, the masses on the periodic table, are for one mole of that substance, okay? Now, all this is gonna do at this point is it gets rid of the grams, right? But now we have moles of NH3, so we need to take it a step further, hence why it's called a two-step problem. If you think in terms of your diagram, we need to go from moles of A to moles of B, meaning moles of another substance. So we're gonna take it another step, and we're gonna to go to moles of NO, okay? And to do that, we need our coefficients. Coefficients, oh, I can't spell that. Anyways, um, so to do that, all we're gonna do is we're gonna do another dot and another line. We're gonna chain them together, kind of like a choo-choo. Okay, or how, whatever you want to think of. We're dot line, we're just going to build on here. Okay, so my grams are canceled out. Now I have moles of ammonia. I want to get rid of those. So here I'm going to put moles of ammonia, right? And then I want to get to moles of NO, right? So I'm going to write on the top mole NO. Okay, now where do I get these numbers? We set up here. We use the coefficients from the balanced equation. So for NO, I'm gonna go up here, the number in front of NO in the balanced equation is four, and for ammonia, the number in front of ammonia in the balanced equation is also four. Kinda of neat. Okay, now I'm ready to solve my problem because moles of ammonia are gonna cancel out. In fact, the ammonias themselves cancel out, right? So we're left with moles of NO. Okay, so let's do our math. Let's see how this uh, turns out. Okay, so I end up with, um, let's see, I have 34 divided by 17. 
Math wise, 17 goes into 34 twice. Okay, so my 17, 34 divided by 17 um, turns into two. Okay, and then over here, I have four over four, which is the same thing as one over one, right? I can reduce those. So I end up with two times one divided by one times one divided by one, or two moles of NO. Okay, so that's how I do it. And I used my diagram, or at least what I know of the diagram, you have the diagram in front of you, to set up my path of how I was gonna get from what the value that I started with, the given value, to the value that they wanted. Okay, eventually you won't need the diagram, but having the diagram out will let you plot your path and figure out what values you need to use. Okay, so let's do a practice, meaning you do it on your own. So the final problem is right here. Here's your balanced equation. The question says how many grams of oxygen can be produced by letting four moles of potassium chlorate react? Okay, and my hint is the mass of oxygen is 16, so you know you're gonna need that, okay? So use your diagram, okay? Realize that your given value is four moles of potassium chlorate, and I'd like you to pause the video at this point and see if you can set up the problem. If you get stuck, you can start the video until it gets to that point at which you're stuck, and then see if you can get unstuck, pause the video again, and finish it up, okay? So right now I want you to try it, okay? See if you can get the answer. Pause it. Okay, hopefully you pause it. Um, let's see, so given value is four moles of KClO3, okay? And I know I'm gonna have a dot in the line, right? So, and I know that I'm gonna have moles of KClO3 on the bottom because I'm gonna have to get rid of the units that I'm starting with, okay? So let's actually do some mapping here. So we know that we have moles of KClO3, right? And they want grams of O2. So based on your diagram, in order to get to grams of O2, we're gonna to have to change the substance first. And to get from one substance to another, we have to go from moles of the first substance to moles of the second substance. So our first step is gonna to be to go from moles of KClO3 to moles of O2. In your diagram, that means you're basically going right through the middle. This is your mole of A, and moles of B would be O2, okay? And to get that, you're gonna use coefficients, right? Then, once we have the moles of O2, we're then gonna take moles of O2, and we're gonna convert it into grams of O2. And the value we're gonna to use to, to, to do that is gonna be the mass of oxygen gas from the periodic table. Okay, so let's set it up. Let's see how this goes. So I have moles of potassium chlorate. I've already canceled them out. We said we need to go from moles of potassium chlorate to moles of oxygen. So I go moles of O2 on top. Okay, the values here are gonna be our coefficients, right? Coefficients from the equation. So potassium chlorate in the equation has a coefficient of two and oxygen in the equation has a coefficient of three. So I plug that in. Okay. Now I'm going to continue. I set up the whole thing before I actually do any math. So I'm going to continue on and I've got my moles of O2, right? Um, if we want to cancel things out just to see it, these moles cancel out, potassium chlorate cancels out. Right now I have moles of O2. Okay, now I need to get to grams of O2. So first thing is I need to get rid of my moles of O2, so I put them on the bottom. And then I need to get to grams of O2. Okay, so I put that on top. Now, remember, the values from the periodic table are for one mole, which means if you ever see grams with moles on the opposite side, the number that goes next to moles is one, okay? Now, the number that goes next to grams, we need to think about this for a second. The mass of oxygen is 16, but remember, an oxygen gas molecule is actually a diatomic molecule. It contains two atoms. So it's not 16, that's not gonna be our mass. Our mass is gonna be 32 because O2 is the mass of two oxygen atoms, okay? And then last but not least, we just need to do some math, okay? In terms of canceling, moles of O2 have canceled out, right? Uh, Math-wise, 
we had four here divided by two, so that's gonna change into a two, and this will change into a one, right? And then we have basically two times three, which gives me six, times 32. And that's gonna give me, if I'm doing my math right, 192 grams of O2. Okay, so there's your problem. Uh, make sure that you complete the whisk now that you've completed the video, and we'll see you tomorrow.